Because um, you've actually seen a version of this question earlier when we were dealing with the capacitors and basically transient and asymptotic responses. Now that we are fully doing time dependent circuit, we can just do it fully. So <laughs> it says consider the circuit below. The capacitor has some capacitance. Uh, let me just to write that somewhere. Um, 25 millifarad and starts out uncharged. The switch is closed and after a long time, the capacitor is fully charged. Okay. So as you are answering this question, for the uh, first uh, couple of parts, uh, you are analyzing this as a transient circuit. So it asks, what is the current through each register a long time after the switch is closed? And this is a hint, a long time. So that means whenever possible, we are looking for some kind of a steady state where things are not changing as a function of time anymore. There are situations where that will never happen, driven AC circuits. <laughs> uh, but a lot of times, you know, you can kind of make that as a reasonable assumption. Yeah, that'll happen. So with a capacitor, the number one thing is that the current through capacitor given is given by the rate of change of how much charge is on the capacitor. If it's in a steady state, then the amount of charge on the capacitor can't be changing. So this has to be going to zero. So with all that, you can treat this circuit for the purpose of this analysis as not having this branch of circuit anymore that greatly simplifies your circuit. You basically have a battery connected to, okay, I have this junction to deal with. I have register R1, register R2, register R3, and register R4. Okay, I think I get what this circuit is. So I have these two branches, um, each individually, these two are in series. Each individually, these two are in series. So I can add their resistances uh, just, uh, just the same. So, oh, and I guess numbers given are super simple. If this is two ohm, that is four ohm. So adding them together, I have equivalent resistance of six ohm. And it's the same deal on the right hand side. Uh, it's three ohm plus three ohm. So I have equivalent resistance of six ohm again. Um, and then these are parallel to each other. So I can figure out the current through this branch and this branch independently. So this branch will be the voltage divided by this, 12 divided by six. I can do that in my head, that's two. So R1 has two ampere, R2 has another two ampere. And the other branch, um, it's going to be the voltage divided by the equivalent resistance through that branch. And by some coincidence, it's the same number, 6 ohm. Uh, you know, they didn't have to be the same, but I guess they are. So <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Let me just submit it to make sure that that is indeed the case. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, all right. Um, so uh, I think the next question might be a little bit more interesting. Let me just to clean up the screen and uh, and because the next part is also asking about a long time after the switch is closed so I think we are still working with this same basic circuit so what is the voltage across let me fix that later across each register a long time after the switch is closed okay uh, I think I'm going to use the fact that I know the amount of current through the each branch of the circuit, uh, one and uh, three. So current I and three, they are individually two ampere, uh, which means, um, oh, so all these, all I have to do is take the current multiplied by the resistance. So I think uh, I remember from looking at above, R1 is two, R2 is four ohms, ohms, and R3 and R4 are both 3 ohm. I think I can do that in my head too, because current is 2. I can just uh, multiply them. 2 times 2 is 4. And they are just uh, asking for the voltage across, so I don't have to worry about other stuff that I might worry about. You know, what is the reference to? I don't have to. It's uh, asking for the difference in voltage across the register. So 4 times 2 is 8. 3 times 2 is 6. And just as a double check, these add up to 
uh, 12 volts that the uh, power supply is providing. That's easy. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, the next part is maybe a little bit more interesting. Okay, so in the next part, it's asking, what is the voltage across capacitor a long time after the switch is closed? And let me just double check one thing I thought I saw in the circuit diagram that it is there. Um, yeah, so they have this ground reference, which I think is a great thing to have. So let me just uh, uh, draw the ground reference. I mean, it's not technically necessary, but hey, it's good to have. So we need to ground it that way. So this is what you can say. You can put a voltage at one point in the circuit. At this point is where I can say, that's where my zero voltage is, because that's connected to the ground. And so to figure out the voltage across the capacitor, really all I have to do is figure out the voltages here. And uh, I'm gonna redraw the capacitor back. And uh, I just need to figure out the voltage at point A, and voltage at point B, and whatever the difference, it will be that. And voltage at point A and voltage at point B, that's super simple to figure out by looking at the voltage drop across this register here, and by looking at the voltage drop across uh, this register here. I don't even have to look at R1 and R3 because, hey, I'm uh, starting my reference from zero and adding these voltages back. So at VA, it's going to be uh, 0 plus um, R2, so 8. At 3B, it's going to be 0 plus R4, so voltage across R4, so 6 volts. So this difference will be the voltage across the capacitor, or quite simply, 2 volts. OK, good. Um, and. Uh, the final question, what is the charge on the capacitor a long time after the switch is closed? Okay, um, so we have this relationship for capacitance of, um, or this is the what I call definition of capacitance, solved for voltage. So this is the definition of capacitance, amount of charge per voltage, capacity to store charge. We solve this for voltage to get or actually here I'm looking for charge. So let's solve it for charge. Solving it for charge, you get charge is equal to capacitance times voltage. So way back above, we are given the capacitance that I raised, uh, 25 millifarad. So um, amount of charge stores should be 25 times two volts. Oh, so double that um, in numerical value, 50. Uh, I had a millifarad, so the numbers will just translate to millicoulomb. Okay. I think all these correspond to the other version of the question you have seen. What you know now is the part E, uh, where it says the switch is then opened. The capacitor discharges through the registers. How long from the time before the current drops to one-fifth of its initial value? So it takes a little bit of uh, thinking through. So if uh, it says that switch is opened, so this is the circuit, right? With the switch was somewhere here, and the actual circuit that I'm drawing is R1, two, three, capacitance. So we've so far been analyzing circuit with this simplified view in mind. Now, once the switch opens, then how we simplify the circuit changes. For one, there's no more current through this branch of the circuit because the switch is open, which means basically everything here you can ignore. Everything here you can ignore. So we are focusing on this portion of the circuit. And I find it easy to just redraw the circuit so that I have the correct mental image in mind. I have capacitor hooked up to these two junctions. So let me draw the capacitor with those two junctions. I have uh, two different things that are connected here. I have R1 that's connected through that junction, and then it goes through here, and R1 is now in series with R3, because the current going into junction, it has to go through here. No other place to go through. R3, and uh, the other branch that's 
connected through R2. I have R2 connected to that same junction uh, through wire. And then this is now in series with R4. So, so this is the new circuit. It's uh, completely different from what we had there. there. So now one of the question it's asking about how long from the time before the current drops to that. And uh, it's basically, um, uh, I guess uh, you can uh, have uh, this kind of basic expression in mind. You can think of uh, current or charge as some kind of an, on an exponential decay. Um, and the exponential decay happens this way, uh, minus t over some time constant. And with an RC circuit, uh, we have an expression for time constant, which I'm going to use because it will help me finish the question more quickly. The time constant is uh, resistance times capacitance. And here you might wonder, um, which resistance? And my answer to that is all of them. You have to calculate the equivalent resistance of these. That is what we are going to use for the R in the time constant. So once we have the value of time constant, then I think I can work out the rest. So let's uh, first do that. Um, I need to figure out R equivalent. And what that will be is basically the sum of these in series, sum of these in series, and then add them in parallel. That's going to be R equivalent. Let me work it out numerically here. So uh, let me call it R13. That's the equivalent resistance of these two. I have their values memorized now, 2 and 3. So 2 plus 3. That's how terrible those numbers are. R24, that's going to be 4 plus 3. So with that, the, for the equivalent resistance, I have to add these two in parallel. So I guess I'll say equivalent resistance is 1 over and then 1 over. R13 plus 1 over R24. And OK, um, let me get that small approximation. So 2.92 ohm is my equivalent resistance. So um, so my time constant, let me just uh, uh, define that. Uh, time constant is tau, uh, the equivalent resistance times the capacitance, which is I think I looked it up before, 25 millifarad, 10 to the power of minus 3. Um, so that's my time constant, which I will use at some point. Um, so with all of that, what you now have to do is um, write out an expression that describes what's happening here. It says, it's asking how long uh, before the current drops to one-fifth of its initial value. So let me write out that equation. I'm going to say, this is my initial value at t equals 0, my current is i naught. So my current at some point will become i naught over 5. That's equal to i naught times exponential of minus t over tau. Ah, So my value of the initial current will cancel out. I don't need to work with it. And I just need to solve for time t here. So I just think through it. I think I need to put the whole thing through the logarithm to get rid of exponential. And when I've done that, I get logarithm of 1 over 5 time uh, is equal to exponential is cancelled out by logarithm function minus t over tau. So solving for t, it's going to be equal to minus tau times natural log of 1 over 5. Now, if this uh, minus sign worries you, don't let it. This quantity is actually negative because it's a natural log of a uh, number smaller than one. Um, and so I'm just going to let the calculator do the work and say minus tau times, uh, I think uh, a log is the name for natural log in SageMath, I think. <laughs> let me just say 1 over 5. So that's an answer. And let me get um, the numerical approximation of that. Okay, um, it says it should be uh, 0 0.117 um, basic SI unit seconds. So in the unit of milliseconds that they ask you, I need to multiply this by 1,117 milliseconds.
Oh, wait, that's not right. What did I do wrong? Um, okay, so, so all of that should be fixed. Let me just refresh it here. And yeah, now it's great with correct. Because, uh, yeah, I got the same capacitor value. So, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, let me put this in an announcement to somewhere. Um, yeah, so. Um, so if you are uh, calculating the correct value and the system was telling you it's wrong, there's a good chance that you are doing it correctly, but the system simply wasn't uh, didn't have the correct answer programmed in as a uh, as the answer. So 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 yeah, with the correction, this is the correct answer, so it, it's all fine. Um,